Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, welcome once again to Curry Cafe. My name is Ray Gary, and as uh, Rick just told you, we talk about all kinds of things here. And today we're talking about something that is far from whimsical. As far as I'm concerned, it's one of the uh, most important things uh, confronting or in our country right now. We're going to talk about uh, guns, gun ownership, Second Amendment. But I don't want to get too far into it until we... Uh, introduce all our guests. So we're going around the table. Like I said last week, this is a thing that seems to work out very well. We just have everybody introduce themselves. I'm Brett Cecil from Port Orford here in Curry County. I'm also currently the Democratic nominee for House District 1 here in the State House of Oregon. Okay. I'm Mike Greer, running for State Assembly District 2, which goes from Santa Rosa to the Oregon border, and I am a Republican. And I'm Rick McNamer, volunteer of the four folks here. We talked about I'm probably the least educated about guns, but willing to learn something today. Okay, I, I started out by saying that this is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the biggest, biggest problems we have in this country right now. We have uh, about 48,000 a year are killed every year by guns. That's one every 11 minutes approximately. Now about half of those, or sometimes more than half, are self-inflicted suicide. So people might want to think, well, gee, that doesn't count if people kill themselves. But the fact that there's a gun available for somebody to kill themselves makes suicide much easier. Um, you don't have to go buy a rope or, or uh, take poisons that probably won't work or anything like that. No, you just go to wherever it is you can get a gun and shoot yourself with it. And most people are knowledgeable enough to find the right place to shoot themselves. There's a, there's an old uh, song from the early 60s uh, called Something on Your Mind. And the guy comes home and finds his, his girlfriend with his best friend, and he's all upset naturally so he thinks the only thing he can do he's going to walk on down to the pawn shop and buy himself a pistol unfortunately it is just damn near that easy um so the, about 472 people are shot and killed each year by accident um that that sounds obscene but um about 650 are killed by cops that's, to me, obscene as well. And there's about 200 people a year show up in, I'm sorry, 200 people a day show up in ERs with non-fatal uh, sh sh gunshot wounds. Um, this accident thing, I, I have a, a good friend who had a son. And the son was about 15 years old, and my friend was an avid hunter, and about the time the kid was born, he was able to retire. And then it, that his life's work was bringing that kid up and having that kid be his good buddy, and they were good hunting partners, and just, he lived to that kid. Now the kid had a uh, good friend about the same age, about 15, whose parents were the head of the NRA in Fairbanks. Uh, both of them, of course, hunting gun safety instructors. And one day, the two teenagers were at the uh, parents' house, got out a gun, and fooling with a gun, and my friend's son was shot in the head and killed. Uh, this, These, are, you would think, be the uh, consummate safety people and the kids would uh, were brought up from day one with with you know don't put your finger on the trigger never point a gun at something you're not going to shoot you know all these stuff that people learn but it, it didn't seem to uh, to do much good there one one other quick and i tell this story a lot it's one of my faves um 
about five or six years ago, some in a state in the Midwest, I'm not sure which one it was, there was a woman who was, again, a big NRA gun safety advocate. She'd be on the radio doing interviews all the time and that type of thing. And she got a uh, a gun purse for Christmas. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what a gun purse is, but I guess it's pretty obvious. Purse you put a gun in. So... Um, she went off to uh, go grocery shopping one day and brought her child along with her. Now, I don't know how old the child was, but the child was young enough that it still sits in the in the little child seat in the in the in the in the, in the grocery carriage. And somehow or other, the little kid who what would that be? Maximum of three, something like that. Um, he got the gun out and killed her with it. So she not only had the gun access to the gun but around in the chamber uh, and ready to shoot safety off I guess because I don't think this three year old would figure it out um, this one of those uh, 472 by accident things so I have I have more boring statistics that I'll I'm going to bring them in later in the show, but anybody have anything to say, or are we all done, and we can go home now? No, no, no. no. <laughs> no quick, no. Real quick, if I may, while you're, y'all are listening, we do have a text number to text in to for your comments, uh, 541-661-4098. And just my little, I'll start off with this, of course, the, the Second Amendment's all part of this, and I wrote it down, I'm sure we've all heard it a lot of times, but a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. My real quick thing on that is, I think it's very open to interpretation. Others probably feel different, but a well-regulated militia, I mean, is that the Army, the National Guard, the Proud Boys? Is it all of those? And the right to bear arms, when this was written, arms were, I'm guessing, uh, you put the ball in there and jammed it, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's not what we have now. Muzzle, a, muzzle-loaded muzzle There you go. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's my little argument with the but, Second Amendment, and I'll stop right there. Thank I, you. I want you to know, though, also at that same period of time, there was a law in the books that they could restrict people from having a gun back at that time. And some of that is still being carried forth. The question I want to make sure that we have as we talk about the statistics and everything else that you have where are those coming from? And we need to make sure that they're, you're not doing apples to oranges. You know, it's like when we talk about the accidental deaths and so forth now, they're considered accidental deaths as a gang. They'll consider that an accidental death that's included if one gang member shoots another. Okay. Uh, so there's a I lot of ways. I don't ways. think that's an accidental it, death. It, that would be a murder. But But actually, you know what? It's included in no, certain statistics. So with those Regardless, statistics, let's make person. well, it, it is. But you're talking about a story of someone that did not handle that weapon, did not store it right, or whatever. But yet, do you have any stories there about the uh, woman that's sitting in her home with her three kids, and a burglar comes in? Okay, and she ends up shooting them. How many times a gun is used to save lives? Oh, interesting! You brought that up about uh, before COVID. I was in the doctor's office and the in the mm-hmm. uh, in the waiting room, and I picked up a copy of the uh, American Rifleman. Is that what the yes, the NRA, NRA magazine is called? I'm just flipping through it, That's and they always, from the NRA one. I'm sorry, American Rifleman is a little bit different from the NRA one, but yeah, same basic thing. Oh, okay. I didn't. I know yeah. that one time they used to have one that was a gun magazine, another one that was a hunting magazine, but that was. Yeah. That was before they fell out of the tree and landed on their landed on their head, evidently. But anyway, there's every every month. I assume it's every month. Every time I've seen it, there's a a column. Usually takes up about a quarter of a page of a time when uh, somebody saved a life because he had a gun, saved his life or somebody else's life. You know, maybe half a dozen incidents. Now, if they also uh, printed an article about how many people were accidentally killed or how many three-year-olds picked up their gun off the coffee table and started shooting Betty, everybody in the room because they saw it so much on television or whatever, they would require a whole other magazine. 
They could not put, put that. And I've read those stories, and I kind of wonder, well, okay, am I getting all the facts here? I, I doubt that I am. Well, yeah, very much similar when you're talking about somebody picking gun and shooting everybody. What are those facts with it? And I think when we talk about the Second Amendment, what we're really talking about is uh, the right. To me, when you read it, yeah, it talks about militia, but it also talks about the right of the people. That's how this nation was established. This is what they're actually doing in other countries now, starting to give back those guns, especially in Israel with the, the terrorist attacks. So you're seeing a lot of things doing it. Now, this is going to be like you're talking about, Ray. It's an issue that, as a school teacher, I have dealt with a long time. I've been on lockdowns because we've had gang members driving by, so we locked down schools. What are we doing in our schools for safety because of guns? And some of the way, again, is the statistics that we use, we need to reference where those are coming from because a lot of the statistics that are put out in the press are put out by you know both sides, but mostly for those that are against guns. That's where you get a lot of that, and a lot of those statistics are wrong. The FBI statistics, I mean, I don't know how many of us have faith in FBI, but a lot of their statistics... I have been do. Pro- well, a lot of their stuff has been proven to be false, not complete hmm. on it. And I think that's when they, we need to go ahead and take a look at where are those statistics coming? Are they coming from the CDC? You know, or where's, where's it coming from? So we need to take a look at it because there's no question that we'll have interesting things to say today. Well, and I 100% agree, man. Facts are facts. Wherever they're coming from, yeah. Uh, uh, we want those to be true facts. Real quick about the FBI now, yes, I have faith in them. I know there's issues, problems everywhere. But uh, what I was reading is crime and violent gun crime has actually gone down for the last few years. Uh, go ahead. I'm doing that because statistics that I was, was reading last night on it, yeah, it, it is going down because they're not including it. It's just kind of like inflation. They don't include food and energy and inflation rates because it makes it go up so high. But that's where all the prices are going. And it's the same thing as certain things they are not including. And also, a lot of those statistics that they're getting, most cities aren't delivering those statistics anymore because they have a new program that they have to send it in. And it's been established the last two years, and it's not being done. And so they're incomplete. So uh, basically, so, you, you're saying right now we don't have correct facts on either that's side. Correct. Okay, so it may be wor- maybe worse than what we're seeing. Is that what you're saying? Well, I guess it could be. <laughs> I also wrote down. Now this is just again not being a gun guy. I had three basic reasons for firearms. Uh, number one, protection. I certainly agree with that. Number two, hunting and recreation, target shooting, skeet shooting, uh, and then. Three, collecting uh, as like antique. I mean, people have a love of guns. I don't have a love of guns. I certainly understand all of those. But um, the to me, I see the overall picture as unrestrict, uh, the gun people, if you will, they want or desire unrestricted access to firearms made for uh, military use. I, I, I just can't see that. Myself. And if you read the First Amendment, it doesn't say anything about what guns you can own. Uh, I've talked to people who said that that will allow you to own a howitzer if you want. Well, that's how or a hand grenade. Or, I suppose. We, we, uh, a, a show or two ago, we talked about when did uh, Thompsons become illegal or how did they get to be illegal? I know it was because um, the mafia and everybody was using them, but uh, I mean, we have people now using automatic weapons what, that are not illegal. Okay, what are the difference between semi-automatic and automatic? Well, What's, uh, well, uh, oh, you, if you, Supreme if, Court I, I meant to look it, it up today, but I forgot to. I, I think a bump stock for uh, AR-15 costs, what, about $250? And they're perfectly that, legal that, again, thanks to our Supreme Court. Okay, actually, just because it's a bump stock doesn't make it an automatic well, it can fire by 800 by, rounds a minute. By, That's pretty yeah. automatic. Uh, I haven't seen an AR-15 that does that. With a bump stock. Okay, even with a bump stock? I haven't well, seen it. So, but so what I'm saying is, is the, the difference between an automatic is one finger pull. Semi-automatic is each time you pull it. But not with so a bump stock. That's a semi-automatic. Bump stock is one pull. Stuff. 
No. Yes. I think yeah. a bump stock turns it into one pole. You know. Yeah. There's. I believe. Yeah, and I think what you're finding is that by putting on a bump stock doesn't make it a, you know, an automatic weapon, a machine gun. Well, that's what the and, Supreme and, Court said, but I don't understand why they because, said that. Probably because they have more information than you do about exactly how it works. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think so, actually, because <laughs> I, I read their the, silly... Th- well, see, and that's it. And this is one of the things that we talked to. The first thing I was here, when we talked about, we came and we talked about civil discourse. But mm-hmm. the first thing I hear every time I come in here is Ray's jumping on somebody, telling us that we fell on our heads, and telling us how bad we are. Every time. That's a, and it's, not every it's time. Tough. I never it's, said anything like that. Last time you just we did. I but say no, it I said we talk, we're talking about, about guns. We actually just, did. Yeah, we're talking okay. about guns, but it's still the same type of thing. You want civil discourse. Well, let's do it in the civil way. Quit calling. You know, I, I don't call people names. I don't need to build myself up that, call you a name. by tearing somebody else down. Right. But that's what we have seen has been happening. And when it comes to guns, it's the same thing. Like you referred to those on, in the R- NRA. Okay, you're telling me the NRA fell on our heads because we believe the way we do. No, I think it was the Supreme Court I said fell on the head. No, you said they, NRA. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll go there as well. <laughs> I, Dan, I, you're I right. I did say I that, yes. <laughs> and, but, but way back when, for those who don't know, I think, I don't know when it exactly it changed, but the NRA was formed to be a safety organization, teaching people how to uh, properly use guns. And they had, I, they had two magazines, and one was a gun magazine and it wasn't it wasn't all this uh owning automatic weapons stuff it was actually about a gun how they operate and that type of thing mm-hmm. and then i believe the other one was more hunting oriented it's been long i was a member back then um but then it, it changed considerably they actually but have, you talk about i can't the, tell you i've never i've never been an nra member and i've never had either magazine so i can't help you there ray okay <laughs> sorry there, there's actually about three different magazines ray because okay. you're absolutely correct there are different magazines that they put out with okay it. good getting back to not a machine gun mm-hmm. yeah, let's let's finish splitting that hair on automatic or semi-automatic oh, oh i because yeah, I, 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 uh, one of the things that i speak about that i know about guns i don't know all the hardware and i don't know all the automatic and semi-automatic and falling on your head or whatever any of that is my issue is violence that happens with firearms and Ray you brought up in the very beginning discussing suicide and I'll stick with (laughs) with statistics I know in Oregon and in my county specifically in Curry County we have a really serious problem here with suicide and this congressional district, which is Oregon, C- Congressional District 4, which is right now that seat's held by Val Hoyle, she has an, she informed me in, in discussions that we've had that our congressional district, which runs from, I believe, Benton County in the north all the way here to the border with California, to Brookings, and as far east as into Douglas County. So it's a pretty good chunk of, of mm-hmm. coastal southern coastal Oregon. We have the highest, and I'm going to say per capita, so it's per capita of veterans and social security recipients that live in this district out of the entire nation. So we have a lot of veterans here that own guns, are elderly, and some of them have some post-traumatic stress issues Mm -hmm. and and some depression issues, as all of us do. About, I want to make sure that I get at least close on this number, 80% of our suicides in this county in Curry result from a firearm. And nobody likes to hear this part. Half of those are female. They're women. Really? They're not just men. Boy, that is so really these numbers, different. Those numbers are higher than what you would s- suspect. Usually women don't use a gun. And we forget when we talk about veterans, we always think of the men. We have lots of, of yeah, women veterans. Difference. We've got to keep that in mind, too. And I meet them every day while I'm out on the campaign trail. You know, I think, um, like I said before, it's, it's, it's convenient, it's quick, and it's easy, and it's effective. Having a gun, if it's shooting yourself with a gun, but if you don't own a gun, uh, you may have to stop and think about it. You may have to go actually buy one or steal one or get one somehow. And I'm not sure what the stats are on this. I haven't, so I didn't look it up. A huge percentage of people who survived suicide, which is a lot, they say they gave it about. Three minutes, three to five minutes consideration. They got pissed off because their team lost the game or whatever. And uh, for whatever reason, and that was a few minutes. So 
And some so of you may that remember, makes that very easy to be yes. successful. And some of you, I know, Rick, you'll remember this, that I happen to be a member of the Gun Owners Caucus of, of the Democratic Party of Oregon, here in Oregon. So we have a caucus of Democrats that actually own guns. Some of them are really into the, the mechanics and the machinery of collecting. Those are machines mm -hmm. that are quite fascinating, the engineering that goes into them. I understand the collection part of it. Me too. And others that want to get out and shoot and like feel how that works. None of us are interested in the violence part of it That's at right. all. And we're all interested in the safety portion of it. So we had a measure passed here in 2022. It was Measure 114. And it had four prongs on it, from what I recall. But the one that interested me the most was called uh, Permit to Purchase, which would require you to have a permit before you buy a gun. So you'd have some safety training before you purchase your weapon. There were some issues about how are we going to do that? Who's going to handle the application? And there were some discussions around using our DMV infrastructure to do that kind of registration. That hasn't gone very far because the whole measure was held up because of all the bits and pieces of it. So we're trying to readdress some of those parts of it that will be moving around the legislature later on. I can't say specifically when, since I'm not currently in the legislature. The One of the other um, pieces of that was coming up with a, a safety means that people that may understand that they're having mental health issues or might have grandkids coming to visit or family members, other people in their household, having a safe storage space for them to lock up their weapon while they want it out of the house or while they're having that metal episode. Um, and for the, the firearms companies that would be providing those spaces, how do we deal with the liability for them? So that was a safety issue that I got involved with in the gun owners caucus. The suicide part of it was the first thing that really drew me to it. And then the gun safety, because the violence to me is completely unacceptable in any Way, shape, or I form. Think there's no would, need you know, for no anyone side. turning a weapon on a person. <laughs> I get absolutely, it if you want to. Absolutely. No, and I agree completely with you. And the possession is a whole other thing. I'm not one to interpret that Second Amendment. Me neither. Because I think <laughs> of the history of it, what was going on there, like muzzle-loaded. Right. <laughs> I, I think it's open to interpretation, yeah. is my point. And most but of now, our laws are set up that way. Yeah. I would like to take that permit thing one step further. Mm. I thought it was an original idea of mine, but in doing research, I... I found that it's not. There are groups trying to do this. But let me throw it, you in the pot with a lot of really smart people that have a good idea okay. around that. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's nice in this pot. Yeah. So, um, it, if, if you want to cut somebody's hair for a living, you have to go to school. You have to get a license. If you want to clean fingernails, you have to get a license, drive a car, uh, own a fly, dog, fly an airplane. <laughs> well, that's, that's, a, that's, a, uh, that's a tax thing. It's not a safety issue. It's a rabies thing. Well, could, oh, okay. It requires a range of these things that that could uh, potentially injure somebody else. Require you to go through some pretty strict requirements, except voting. Well, that has nothing to do with this. <laughs> no, uh, we, voting. we teach that in school. Well, well yeah, right. Um, <laughs> we do. Why? Why is it that if if I want to take my car out and drive it to? Fred Meyer to buy a quart of milk, I have to have a license that, that I had to jump through some hoops to get to drive that car. But I can own a gun. And a, a gun is is extremely harmful and people don't know how to use them, for one thing. Don't know when they can use them. We see all the time, there was a, a thing a while back where a security guard was chasing a shoplifter out of Walmart and a woman who, good Samaritan, law-abiding uh, person, sh shot the guy. Well, that was not a good shooting by anybody's standard. And and when she was convicted, she was PO'd. She says, well, the next time I won't bother trying to help anybody. So even if she was convicted, she didn't understand that she had done something wrong. But anyway, this license would be a bear to get going initially. Uh, might take 10 years. I don't know. But then it would be a a felony to own a gun if he did not have a license to own a gun. Now, that's not restricting anybody as far as the Second Amendment goes from owning a gun. just makes you jump through a hoop or two. I just cannot imagine why that is not the law. And uh, It is the law in most areas. No, it okay. isn't. In yes, it is. California particularly. California is the most regulated gun state in the nation. 
I have to have a birth certificate to buy ammunition. Okay, they just put on additional tax of 11% on any gun that you buy. We are, so re- we are extremely regulated in California. There are actually national laws also. There is no such thing as a gun show you know, loop that you can go buy a gun at a gun show without any type of registration. You have to. In order to get a gun, you have to register it. Okay, why don't we and make it's that? it's state. It's, it's not it's, registered it's, it's in the na- gun. I want to register the gun owner. I want to make sure that— That's part of it. Part, you know, not even through the training, but through go through a significant— background check. None of this fill out a form, no, I am not an alcoholic, and that kind of stuff. The, the same type of restrictions you might need to, to own an automatic weapon today. Well, well, okay. yeah. Just real quick, we did get a text. I just want to read this one text. All right. AR-15, full auto rate of fire, 600 to 900 rounds per minute. Mikey Mino, bump stock on AR-15 rate of fire, 400 to 800. Round Which is just minute. about the same, same right? Roughly. Just about the same as as an M60, which uh, when I was in Vietnam, that was our main. That was the right. main That's gun. That was gun. the big gun that a uh, yeah. infantry platoon carried. Okay. Number one on your registration, the FBI does a thousand checks a day because you have to fill out paperwork. Mm-hmm. They do a thousand a day. Okay, right now. But what's the what's the way you can do a quick check? You can't. You have there's to go something you, you can, can, you can I do can it. go down and buy a gun, and I can't even take possession of that gun for ten days. Is, it, it, now, Mike, is that is that a national thing? No, and different not. states have a different. In California, it is, but there are some national things that you have to be registered. I think I well, think to buy a gun in this course. state, you just need to put the cash across the counter. Is that I, right? I don't. I doubt it. Uh, well, no. Brent would know more about. I have an organ. I personally haven't purchased an organ. I'm pretty sure there's an application, a background check process. I did been that. I and didn't I, read. And something. I know there's a oh, time no. period on it that if it's not approved within a certain time period, right. you automatically get your weapon. Yeah. If, I, it, if it's, the background's not complete. That's the thing I was thinking of. And it's pretty pretty short period of time. It's like three days or something. Yeah, it's something a three, like that. I three did read an article and I, this weekend as I was cramming, and I thought it, I thought it did say, a big loophole to get around this stuff was purchasing and selling guns at private uh, shows. Now, that's what the article said. Or, Back. or me going out and, with that, and, that, and that's not true that's any longer. That's not true? No. Okay. Particularly in California. And it's a state, California's you, a whole different a whole set of different laws. Stores. I can't even give a gun to my own kids that I have bought without filing out paperwork. You have to transfer it. You have to transfer And the transfer has to go through a gun dealer. So tell me this, though, Mike. Do you, are you okay with? It? We have to have some restrictions on guns. Is that? Can we call them controls, Rick? They're not restrictions; they're controls. Yeah, because we can't have. <laughs> okay, there's there's restrictions. There's safety. You, you just uh, read the Second Amendment. Maybe it's a euphemism for control, but either way, don't you believe there there has to be some checks out there? What would you suggest should be there? Well, I, I, okay, the background checks, uh, which, waiting, are being, which are being done, waiting periods. Which are there? National, national. I, the, I believe there is a national waiting is period there? also. Mm. The, okay, I okay. can confirm that. Um, um, <laughs> fall a license, a license to own well, a gun. Okay, and period. Another one, uh, back training, to, training, legal and illegal. You said uh, um, automatic and semi-automatic. Yeah, to me, nice. either one is overly dangerous for society. <laughs> why, why are they even really? Okay. Why are military weapons uh, accessible to? Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you why you can you can go on YouTube, and 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 look up bump stocks, and maybe you'll find the same video I did, of a of a father and his son loading up their bump stock on their uh, AR-15 that has a hundred round magazine, and they go out and shoot up all the cactus to the, for for the YouTube thing. That's the reason. Tell me what the reason is. I don't know, but that's that's what. Well, what else are you going to use a damn hundred round magazine for? I was I, I was I, 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 I don't was a combat have soldier one because for my usage of the gun is yeah. that's not what my usage is. But some people it is. It. There and was a guy, if you recall, in what, what year was it? Seventeen, uh, who was kind of a wealthy guy. He rented a very nice room in Las Vegas, and because he was rather wealthy. He was able to buy 10 AR-15s with bump stocks, with 100-round magazines, 
and shoot over a thousand rounds in ten with, minutes. at the concert. I know, I know what you're yeah, talking about. Of course, about. you know what I'm okay. talking about. Yeah. I think, and I think, that, and and after that incident, where this guy sprayed a crowd of people who were doing nothing but going to a concert, it took months for there to be any kind of a restriction on bump stocks. And now the extreme court has, has eliminated that. So when we talk about there was about what was it close to sixty people killed, and hundreds, four or five hundred wounded. And when we say wounded, we always think of. Well, I was just watching a, uh, a an, an episode of Half Gun Rule Traveled yesterday, and <laughs> and Paladin got shot, and he immediately got up and walked off into the bar. That's a pretty rare wounded. I mean, wounded can mean you're going to be paralyzed for the rest of your life or you're going to be badly disfigured, or you're going to not have an arm or a leg. And then the people that are not in the statistics are the people who were in that crowd just watching the guys play their guitar, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're being sprayed at I, with, I, I, with I an guess, unbelievable fire rate, and for the rest of their lives they're going to be affected by that. No, and, and I agree. I don't disagree with you on that. I think one of the things that we need to take a look at is we're talking about violence. We don't want yeah. the violence. I don't know anybody that wants the that. violence. Agreed. Okay. Now, how do we stop that? That's Why, what we I have like enough. We have so many laws on the books right now to for guns that if we even enforced them, you'd see a lot of that violence go down. Who has the guns? What you're doing is you want to penalize the legal citizens and yet still let the gang members, the criminals, they're not going to listen to your, they're not going to say, okay, this is a gun-free zone. They don't care about that law. They don't care what you say. They're going to get their guns, whether they're going to you know, put it together, they're going to steal it, or whatever they're going to do. You know, straw buyer or whatever, which is cut down quite a bit, they're going to go ahead and get those guns. And they're not going to do it. When you talked about the three reasons, those yeah. are the three reasons. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. 67% of all people that have guns, their number one reason is protection. 67%. You have 23 million gun owners. Yeah. 23 and million. So they can protect themselves from that next person that has a gun. Yeah. The only reason they need <laughs> a gun for protection is to the circle. Can, can, you, <laughs> can you give me, and you might be able to do so, can you give me an instance in some of these where... That was actually an NRA member that did that? I don't track NRA numbers either. Yeah, well, that's it. Or members. They don't, I have they no don't. idea who is and isn't. That, that's exactly it. They don't have it because it's not there. But you can bet that if it was well, an NRA think, member, it's going to show up. Well, I'm sure in an investigation, the question said, would be asked. In it, oh, absolutely. A, a and but yet you don't I just gave you two stories of, of uh, the two 15-year-olds, one shot the other. You did. And, and, uh, and the and woman with the pure, gun purse. Are, and the other woman who was helping the Walmart guy chase a... And, they, I, I don't think being a member of the NRA has anything to do with it. I'm sure if we did uh, you're gonna find research it, it to that point, we would find out that... Of the 48,000 people that die every year by gunshots, some of those involved an NRA member. Oh, I'm sure there are, because I know some probably are NRA that are protecting themselves, too. And you, you talk about the, these uh, statistics not being accurate, and the That's correct. apparently thinking the FBI is making them up or something. No, no. So let, let's, let's, let's assume that they're, they're completely wrong, and let's cut the, the annual deaths from 48,000 to... What would that be? 24,000. Unacceptable. It, it, it doesn't matter how many deaths we have. Those that are violent, well, but you were saying we don't this, want. That, what I'm saying, what I said. You said the FBI is making up the stats. No, that's not what I said. That's what you read into. What I said is that through the new system, the NPW system, the cities and the have not been able to give their information to the FBI. And because they're not able to give them through that new system that they've had the last two years, they don't have all that information. That's what I'm saying. Hey, let me let me quickly break in. We're over halfway through, and we could go on for a couple more hours. But uh, number one, again, if you want to comment, the text 541-661-4098. And just like to remind everybody, you're listening to KCIW 100.7 your local all-volunteer radio station. And if you want to partake or have an idea or want to volunteer, go to kciw.org. Okay, back to the lively uh, conversation here. <laughs> I guess Thank you. 
one ahead. thing that we need to take a look at, I know that Brett and I are both interested, I'm sure that you're interested, so how do we stop this violence? Yeah, I think that, That's really what it comes down to. What do we do? You, you, you two are, one of you is an elected official, one of you is soon about to be. That's your job. Oh, so everybody, everybody will say the first um, job of government is to protect its citizens. Oh, absolutely. And I think what we need to do is we need to enforce the laws that are on the books. And we're not we doing have, that. We, have, we have a sheriff right in this county who will not because well, he doesn't agree with well, them. Let's hear Mike's response. That, that, that's, that what, what I'm saying is what we're saying. not enforcing those laws. We need to do it. Okay. You get somebody that goes out and shoots somebody. They're back out on the streets in 30 days. Even They're back out on the streets in three days if you're in Washington, D.C. or back in Maryland or Baltimore you know, or in L.A. There are, the prosecutors are not doing their jobs. Okay, so you have a lot of these people come back out into their, their criminals. They used the gun before, and all these things we had are now gone because they're not enforcing them. They're letting them out of jail. That's where we have all the crime, including the gun violence. Most of the people using the gun for violence for crime have done it before, and they've been released to do it again. That's where the problem is because the laws that have been established in California, particularly by the Democrats, is that early release for anybody. They are not holding people accountable. I don't believe we should hold guns accountable. We need to hold the people accountable, the people that are doing the crimes, the people that are doing it. I agree that the parents whose son went and shot, shot those kids, they got everything they deserved, okay? Mm -hmm. Because that, that's what should have happened. We need to hold people responsible. More, more of that. Absolutely. Okay. Let me see. Wait a minute. Yeah. Somebody write that down. We agreed on something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, but, but that's yeah. what we need. We got another text from a gentleman, oh. uh, Mr. Hank Cunningham, combat medic in Vietnam. Not a gun owner, but not opposed to licensed gun ownership, except assault rifles. Accidents happen, however. We're hosting a family reunion later this summer. Children will be present. The risk is simply too great. Um... And to Mike, just real quick, see that's something else I never didn't don't agree with the the adage. It's written down somewhere in my mess. Uh, guns don't kill people; people, people kill people. People kill people. I believe guns are also very responsible for that. So are knives. So are cars. They're the tools. Yeah, for the killer. You know, that's are it, if, okay. same thing. It's just like why not hold Ford, Chevrolet responsible. When somebody uses their car and runs somebody over. Well, the person is responsible. The person is. But that's Ford not what they're Ford trying to do with the laws. You want the rifle people, the gun well, companies, to be responsible Ford didn't because make someone that gun. doesn't use it well, the way they're supposed to. Ford didn't make that car to kill people or to kill anything or damage designed, anything. It, it got used to protect the way it was. You're doing a double standard, Ray. That's a double standard, basically, mm -hmm. is what you're saying. One's a car, you know, one's a gun. Well, There's It comes back down to one thing, standard. and that one thing is personal responsibility and accountability. And that's what you're doing. You're saying you don't need to be accountable. Well, Mike, let's grab on the accountability. Yes. I think a lot of the violence, if we're going to get back to that subject, we need to start looking at how to cool that down a little bit. Why is that happening in the first place? That's where we got to go. Yeah. I will push back and disagree with you that our prosecutors aren't doing their job wrong. <laughs> They're doing the job within the law that they have been given to do. Through the legislature that have passed those laws. I'm Correct. Not, I'm not going to question the job they're doing. They're doing the job they're asked and the, within the law that they've been given to do the job. So they're but, not in the place to fix it. But them. we have sheriffs in this state, in this county, who are not going to enforce gun laws they don't agree with. You mean our constitutional sheriffs? I don't know what they are. I talked to one the other day at a forum. He uh, Evidently, there's something uh, about 30-round magazines or something restricting those and he didn't think that was necessary because of blah 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 well it's the law i mean he's given the law to enforce so the gun owner who has this 30 round magazine now is safer what about me what about what about my safety i am i'm not have to wander around streets where there's people who sometimes aren't the sharpest knives in the drawer walking around with pistols that have 30 round magazines or all the knife knifings going on in great britain so Same type of thing. So you have it all. Guess what? I'm my. I'm going to ask you, Ray. Is what do you want to see done? Do you want complete guns gone out of people's hands? No. I, I want just what I said at the beginning of this. 
if it could be done, it would not eliminate gun violence at all, but it would greatly reduce it. You have to, in order to own a gun, you have to have a license. To get that license, you have to jump through some hoops. Not just go down and fill out a form. You have to go to classes and learn what you can and what you can't do with a gun, things of that nature. Mm. And if you, uh, 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 quite a few uh, requirements to get this license. And then if you are found, like these guys you're talking about being out on the street in three days, with a gun, it's a felony, a serious right. felony, a yeah. very serious felony, equivalent to flying an airplane Correct. without a license. Yep. Or something. So yes. I, I do have to ask if you're going to lock all those people up, where are you going to put them? I don't know. <laughs> I, there are already enough think, prisons think, in the country. I think it'd be diminishing people. returns on that. Yeah. I th I think uh, our um, uh, former president was talking about putting all the homeless people in tent camps. I don't know. Maybe that will work. Yeah, that's a whole other subject. No, I, we can talk uh, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah we won't get into that. Then I'll have to talk about cages <laughs> but in the Obama administration. But I, I think when it comes down to violence, how are we going to go ahead and do it? Because we need to get to the root causes. And I think that's what, as politicians, we're looking at. How can we do that? And the, it's not well, the, safe, the safety part of it. How can we make the school that you work? work in or worked in, Mike, how can we make that safe? Actually, I, yeah, I, just, I, don't I, just, have, I don't have children, and for however many reasons I can drum up. <laughs> I'm horrified to think that a parent every day sends their kid to school not knowing if they're coming home at the end of the day. I, I just can remember the first three school, hours. The first thing we did was the first hour we had every year, we had the writer essay about what you did on your summer vacation. Now they spend the first day with shooting drills and being issued mm. uh, fireproof shields. I've, I've, like, I've never I, had that happen that? in any of my schools, and I've been on lockdown, well, so I think you're completely misinformed about that. I just spent well, three hours. What? I spent three hours Thursday in a safety meeting on school school safety. What are you going to do to make those kids safe? Right. Okay. We had the uh, our chief of police was there. We had uh, consultants from Idaho. And from California, said, so, okay, what can we do to make it safe? Okay. My problem that I have, quite frankly, is the people that are going and shooting, creating the violence, that's where you need to keep the guns from. Okay. Those are the, the gang members. Those are the, you know, the people that are committing the crimes. And we're not doing that. We I don't are think not gang members that. are doing any of the sh you know, shootings. And on. that's it. It's not. And the thing is, Quite frankly, the people that are using the guns and the violence continue to do it. Well, and in Cal I can only I, really go strictly. I, they're already criminals, so their the, behavior is exactly. criminal. Exactly. That's why they're not going to obey any laws, any registration you have. They are not going to obey those anyway because they don't do it now. Well, what makes you think without a deterrent. That they're going to do it without you, that? You, you, using that example, why do we have any laws at all? Right. It, why, well, no, why, yeah. why should we make it illegal to drive drunk? Drive okay, drunk, back, steal, back to steal that, from somebody? Cause yeah. if you're back to the cars and the rifles and who you're suing. Same well, type of thing that you're talking about. Yeah. No, we know we have to have laws, okay? We don't always agree with the laws. Do I always agree with the speed limit law? No. You know, I don't always agree with those. But when it comes to the violence that's going on, we have to have those laws. But why are those laws being superimposed on people that are using guns appropriately, and they're not being imposed on those that but, aren't. Okay, I, let me just, on that, too, and I, I know it's, I, I kind of agree with you there, but people that are using guns correctly, why would they be averse to exactly. jumping through a couple of more hoops to maybe prevent uh, gun violence? And I'm going to, I, before I forget, I have to, one article I read in the paper a few days ago, um, Lead bullets. What's the are, are lead bullets? Uh, from what I understand, they're illegal. Sometimes legal. I don't know. Just, are that, they legal? That, not in hunting. Okay. They just had lead bullets shoot three. Somebody poached three elk down there. That's where I was going. Okay, that's where you're going. Okay, yeah. And what a and, sad. And, lead, and it's not there. Okay. 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 But I mean, ammunition is a completely different thing. And what well, basically has happened... It's, uh, is, it's somebody abusing uh, a gun. Exactly. And uh, not only that, uh, to, to leave those beautiful elk, just I they agree. shot them, left them. And then so. the condors and the predators, uh, they come through and then get uh, 
and, and, and they said that's happened before the poaching up in the, that part of Eureka, <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with some of those. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, and just, stuff. just the but, abuse of but, firearms. You know, and, and so what do you do? Well, if we find out who those are, you hold those people accountable. Yeah, Why am sure. I going to hold the ammunition accountable? Why am I going to hold... Well, the ammunition the, can be harmful right. to everyone. Yeah, but, to, yeah but, but why am I holding the ammunition accountable and the rifles accountable instead of the people that did it? How about We both? need to start doing... Holding. Well, again, I would say That's both. where the problem is. But what about well, the... I asked this before, the sheriffs that are, will not enforce the laws they don't agree with. What do... We, no. We've got legislators fact, I, that don't... Sheriffs are elected there was, in Oregon. One department... <laughs> They're elected in Oregon. We can remove those sheriffs. But we're not. We're re-electing them. We can time. remove those people. But we're we not. We just had a sheriff's election here. I May. know. And, and, and the, and the guy was talking about one again. Yeah. Well, then that, that's why we vote, is to decide to do that. And so you have to you know, that's live with point. it, even though they disagree with you. I disagree with a lot of things. Ray and I, we know we do. But you know what? That doesn't mean we can't be polite to each other and have friends and, you know, that type of thing. But, you know, ballot box. But I, I, I would appreciate, you know, Ray, you can come down to California and vote for me. I'm sure I can get an extra ballot for you. That would be illegal. <laughs> you know that would be illegal. We would never do that. <laughs> Where are you yeah, venturing, Mike? Did you bring any with you? If we can... <laughs> Another show. But, if I show. Have the ballot box here, will they be legal in California? Uh, it depends yeah. on who counts them. <laughs> Okay, the, and it depends whether or not it goes to our the county clerks the count them, and I trust our county clerks. So let's I not even our start our county that clerk in Delano is super. Yep. I, I agree. Right on. The smaller the county, the better it is, and not even a question about it. They work hard, you know, and stuff. So they do. Let me uh, to, to yes. you, Mike. Again, not picking on you, but no, maybe go ahead. We are. But back to the NRA. Now you're still a member. I am a lifetime Le- me- lifetime member. member of NRA. I am a Golden Eagle supporter, which goes ahead and did. I just received the. Endorsement for the California Rifle and Pistol Association for the okay. state of California for my campaign. Okay. And also for Moms for America. Okay. Endorsement. So. That, now you say Golden Eagle. Those go together, Golden don't e- they? Golden Eagle <laughs> is the legislative part of NRA. Okay. NRA cannot do politics. Ah. Okay. <laughs> now let me go. Okay. Go the, it's there. That's why they have the ILA, the other part, okay. that does it. It's just like schools, okay? The teachers associations, by definition, don't do politics, but they have almost like a pack. They have packs. That, they have packs that you can donate to. They do and they don't. Okay, <laughs> and stuff that you can donate okay. it to and they can do it. So it's basically the same way. And so I am a Golden Eagle member. They're supporting those legislation that they uh, okay. Do yes. When you said Golden Eagle, it brought to mind. I would never been a member, obviously, but there was an Eddie Eagle program at one time. Okay, to, good to promote absolutely, safety, if I'm not mistaken, yes, for the, young people. The the government has actually decided that's not a good idea to do do that safety. Uh, okay. In fact, the the Biden administration just passed a, uh, an executive order just not too long ago, and through the um, I guess it's also through the Department of Education not to fund the safe shooting programs. So they're taking away millions and millions of dollars. In California, we have a number of shooting clubs, skeet clubs and so forth, right. that are some of the national champions. That money has been taken away because they don't want our kids trained in gun safety. Imagine and it's being done by... I, I, I think uh, you've interpreted that a little, a little wrong. They don't want our kids... Training gun no. safety. I, I doubt very much. No, that's just, exactly what it is. We don't that's want them training gun safety, so take the money away. I got two families. That, that's that's what dangerous they're, doing. they're going backwards because they can't eliminate guns because you have so many gun owners in the United States. Like so I, that, that 23 I doubt million that's I was the talking. intention of that law, though. No, I don't it, it think isn't. It's but to that's keep anyone the, from being safe. Okay, you know what? That's what's happening because they're taking it out of the schools. And they have been instructed by the Department of Education from Washington, D.C. Not to use it for it, okay, and that's something that's come out within the last uh, month and a half. I wish maybe, I would maybe they're trying to read time. I have two family members skeet shooters, so yeah. I'll have to. Yeah. Um, I, and I want to go back real quick back to the NRA. I think you have to admit the they've been in some trouble, tumultuous few years over uh, Wayne Lapierre. Uh, being a little what uh, fraudulent and greedy and power and I mean that, that's the opinion. I, I've that, never I've never met him, but okay. uh, are there 
things like that, yes, just like any other big organization, I could do the same thing with the Coastal Review, uh, all the different nonprofits that are around that are getting money that don't know how to spend it. No, no, agreed. And so I'm not going to disagree with some of the things that they did there. So okay. we do have a, uh, a new president right now with NRA, and okay. their big thing is safety. Every issue of the book magazine I get talks about safety, always. Okay. And especially student safety. Uh, that 23 million gun owners I was talking about, that was, I misstated that. That's how many gun owners have new gun owners in the, since 2020. It's 23 million more. Okay. So, okay. So it's not actually, a total of 23 million well, in the United makes, States. It's that, much higher. Is that gun owners or guns? Gun owners. That makes me feel like safe going out to the car knowing there's, there's all those NRA members protecting me. So Ray Wall, hey, right, by the way, we've had quite I, a few. You, doing that. you have to agree is is actually representing gun manufacturers, not gun owners and shooters. If they were, because eventually what's going to happen? All right, the things are going to get so bad that there's going to be draconian restrictions on owning guns, and you'd think that they would. There already be, are. Oh, really? Wait a minute. Ca California, I just talked about California. walking around downtown to the pawn shop. Yeah. Well, Cal California is very draconian. Okay. Just, I'm ignorant. Give me an example of a draco draconian uh, restriction in California. The fact that I have to have a birth certificate to get ammunition? You have what? to have one to get okay. a driver's license. You know, well, uh, yeah, you, have you have should one have vote. one to get a voter, to get able to vote, you too. You have to have a a birth certificate. Oh, no, that's right. To get your okay. voters registered. So now you want all this for guns, but just you don't want it for voters. It's okay. required so, for voters because so, when you go with your you, driver license that you got with your birth certificate, uh, that's, you've already proved that's it. What not about true. this guy in, in, but in the guy in, in um, Las Vegas who perfectly legally bought those ten guns, ten bomb stocks? Uh, What's the other? Oh, the the hundred round magazines and all the ammunition. Probably did have to show birth certificate. So he, what? He had them anyway. Very, yeah, very possibly he had to. I I don't know. Very okay. Likely. I seem to remember yeah, the but, interviewing some of the dealers that. But he that probably had a background guns. check too. Nothing is is perfect now. Absolutely, what happened is horrible. Absolutely. Nobody wants to see that. We don't want to see it anywhere, whether it's in schools, whether in our streets. It doesn't make any difference. I just had someone, you know, murdered down the street from my house, you know, in the last couple of weeks. So we don't want to see that. Was that a it's gang member, violence. by the way, that killed him? No. You keep no, referring I actually, to all the bad guys that own guns actually as a gang couple, members. It was actually down oh, in the home, homeless area that's down by my house. Okay. But the thing is, you want to take guns away from those that are do, using them wisely and for activities. I use mine for target practice, okay? I haven't been hunting for a long time. Do Have I gone hunting in the past? Absolutely with it. Uh, so I take a look at what I am doing, okay? How are they being used? You're always going to have, as you would say, those crazies that are going to be out there that are going to do something no matter what the law is, and you're not going to be able to stop them. And what's happening now is we're not able to stop those bad people from using those guns that they have, that they've got by using, you know, either stealing them. So let, let's level the play, playing field. Okay. I think we can agree on this and get back to the safety and, and the violence part of it. And we talked about car safety. We talked about gun safety. I don't think those are two separate standards. Would anybody disagree there? No. I think safety, safety is safety, whether safety, it's your yeah, car or yeah, not. Yeah, right. So I think we do everything we can to make sure that people are safe in their cars and when they drive and other people on the road are as safe as possible. I know in Port Orford, we just had our entire, our two-mile stretch of, of downtown Highway 101 runs through it. <laughs> yep. And we just had it all repaved, and they redid all of our sidewalks and our crosswalks. Yep. And yep. My blinking, wife said blinking lights. We, we have no yeah. stoplights in town, but we do have blinking lights at the school yep. to increase the safety for kids crossing yep. the street, adults crossing the street, and every bit of vehicular traffic. I hear lots of complaining from some of my neighbors. That why did they have to do that? Technically, they didn't change the layout, the format of our striping on our streets. It's the same as it's been since I've lived there. I moved there seven years ago. It didn't change. They just repainted them. But they changed some of the sidewalk crossings. I think we can improve our gun safety in lots of different ways. I don't have the answers as to how to do that, but I think permitting Me might either. be a way to put a, a speed bump in. It's not a barrier or a restriction, but I think it would allow us to get a little bit better grasp on who those people are that have the guns. 
and, and I think that's what my point is, Brett, is that the laws are already on the books, but they're not enforcing the laws. Well, maybe that's what that's we need where, to do. That's what needs to be done is to enforce the laws that are on the books, not making new laws. One of the first things I was asked when I decided to run is what new bills are you going to do? I don't want to do any new bills. I want to go ahead and correct the ones that aren't there. Yeah, how do you find We don't need those? to make all these new laws. Let's enforce the ones that are there. And that's what we need to do. Everything that comes up, it's always about, well, we need to restrict guns, so we're going to raise the price, okay, on how much it costs to have a gun. Uh, you've got one place that wants to raise the cost a thousand percent. How do they want to raise the cost? At purchase. Okay. And, uh, who, okay. Who, who, Some of the who, things that who you raise this thousand percent. Yeah. To, who, to the, benefit is, does that fall? Though is my question because that's going to tell the story. Okay, it's legislators that want to do that. Yeah, and and that's it. It's something that we need to do something. If we go ahead and charge a whole bunch, and do I mean the cost? Like say. In California, you know what the costs are like. It's completely, you know. But my question, know my question here. is, where does that thousand percent increase? Hey, where do those dollars go? To the state general fund, basically. So it's just like everything I have. They say the eleven yeah. percent tax in California they just put on says, okay, it's going to go to gun safety. It's going to be taking care of registration, all that type of stuff. But quite frankly, that's not what the law is quite saying on it when it was written up. So we need clarification. Okay, through the, that, absolutely with it, because uh, it doesn't do it. It goes to nonprofits for mental health that doesn't necessarily concern gun safety. So it goes to different things. It doesn't go where it says. It's a lot like road tax. It doesn't really go to roads. It goes to making trails or bike paths. I'm not saying that's wrong. Unless but, maybe that, so, and that's that mental what health, we need to do. Unless maybe that mental health issue addresses suicide by firearm. Yep. Some of that money may go, not all of it. Not, well, that's it. But some of How much it is going, and that's basically what it is. But that's only, you know, a very small part of some of the things that you have to, we do have to register, okay? I have to register to buy ammunition. I have to go ahead and uh, register to get a gun. I ha you know, and I have a waiting period to get a gun. Mm -hmm. So I have all those. We have red flag laws. You know, there are those also there and so forth. So we have those things. Has the violence dropped down? Well, it hasn't. Back I just said it has. Yeah, okay. Well, if you, look, we see that if you look in, yeah, well, that's depending on what statistics you look at, because I can look at other statistics for this. You know, again, I'm talking California. I can look at other statistics in California that show something different. But what we need to do is to go ahead and make sure that's, that we focus on what needs to be done, and that is getting the guns away from the people that aren't using them. Where are most of those crimes being caused? You talk about mass shootings, but the definition of a mass shooting and what it includes, a school shooting, if you're within two, if you're within just a couple, uh, you know, blocks, two blocks away, and you show a gun, even if it's not shot, that's considered a school shooting by definition by the CDC. So take a look at the definitions. That's a new one to me. Yeah, yeah, take I never take heard a look that. at the definitions. Yes. Okay. We, ahead, we, yeah, we're I, really I, running out of time. I, I, we're, yeah, we're down to just about a minute and a half, but I just want to yeah. definitely thank our two out of town guests, <laughs> Mike Greer and Brett Cecil. So I really appreciate you guys showing up. And thank you for inviting me. Thank Even you, though everything you said was wrong, I appreciate you coming as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I enjoy it, Ray, every time. Uh, <laughs> and Mike's been here before, and so has Brett. So yeah, they'll be here again, I'm sure. Yeah. So there you Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Think of another controversial issue, or maybe they can think of something they'd like to talk about. Or, or another whimsical, fun issue that yeah. we've had. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll try that, too. This was very whimsical. <laughs> okay. No, I really, yeah, we all appreciate you guys showing up, man. Great talk. Great conversation. Yeah. Yep. We're down to less than a minute. Anybody have something quick to say? Sure, I do. Of course, I'll take up that time. Go. You're running for, go ahead. So let's not overlook in the fact that we talked about guns and yep. ammunition. Yep. Volatile stuff. Those high-powered weapons have a whole different type of ammunition in them. That my dad was a police officer. He had a nice little thirty-eight chrome finished thirty-eight with a pearly handle. It was beautiful. It would have been fun to play with, but that didn't have the velocity to it when you shot it. That an AR-15, right? Would have exactly. Those are deadly, deadly weapons. Okay, there's the bumper music. Means we're out of time. Thank you, participants. Thank you, everybody. And you can still send a text, by the way, to that text number. Or KCIW.org, send us an email. Thanks for listening.